Chapter 5 A New Creation What is regeneration? According to the Bible, it is a new creation. When God regenerates a man, it is a miracle of the same order as when he created the universe. In fact, morally speaking, it is a much greater miracle. Regeneration is a creative act of God. Every Christian is a new creature. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17-18 through 18. We see here that the Christian is described as a new creature. In other words, when God makes a Christian... He makes something new out of nothing that did not exist before. Moreover, regeneration always involves this creative miracle. If any man, anywhere, is in Christ, he is a new creature. There are no exceptions. If a man is not a new creature, he is not in Christ. This is not just a pleasant picture, but a reality. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. The old order has gone. The new order has already begun. Everything is new for the Christian. He sees the world in a whole new light. Even the gravel by the roadside and beer cans in the ditches. Heaven above is softer blue. Earth around is sweeter green. Something lives in every hue. Christless eyes have never seen. G. Wade Robinson We have no part in bringing this miracle to pass. A thing cannot create itself. God does it all. All these things are from God. Verse 18 what a mighty work this is. The Bible refers to it as a creation again and again. Created for good works. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works that no one should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. It is highly significant that when Paul thinks about salvation, our being saved by grace through faith, he thinks in terms of a creative work of God. Christians are specifically said to be God's created workmanship. If our concept of salvation is just that a man makes a decision, steps out of the line of those on the way to hell, and into the line of those on the way to heaven, we've got a very defective view of salvation. Christians have been created in Christ Jesus. What is the nature of this creative work? First of all, it is in Christ Jesus. That is, it takes place in the sphere of union with Christ. This parallels what Paul has said in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Secondly, it is for good works. The purpose of this creative work is to ensure that good works will be its outcome. These works have been prepared beforehand for us to walk in, and all Christians do walk in them, because as new creatures, they have been specially designed, crafted, and created by God to do so. The church is a new creation. That in himself 
he might make the two into one new man, thus establishing peace. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. From this important passage, we learn that Paul uses the language of creation to describe the existence, not just of individual Christians, but of the church as a whole. The church is not an organization. It is a created organism, a living thing, and a new thing. Christ has taken two totally divergent groups, Jew and Gentile, and in himself created the two into one new man, the body of Christ. This living body is indwelt by a single spirit, the Holy Spirit, and shares a common life, the very life of Christ. Both the church as a whole, the entire body of Christ, and the church in its local manifestations, individual bodies of believers, are miraculous creations of God. No man can start a church. God must do the impossible and make something out of nothing for a church to exist. He does this by creating a number of individual Christians made one by virtue of their common life. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is His new creation by Spirit and the Word. From heaven He came and sought her to be His holy bride. With His own blood He bought her, and for her life He died. Samuel J. Stone Created in Righteousness and Holiness that, in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. Ephesians 4, 22-24 According to Paul, not only is the church as a whole one new man, but each individual Christian is also a new man. The important thing to notice at this point is that this new man is again spoken of as having been created. What is he like? He has been created in the likeness of God, in righteousness and holiness of the truth. These are the characteristics of this new creature. Such descriptions should give us a feel for how real this creative work is. The new man has been created in the likeness of God, in righteousness and holiness. Paul's language here is not the language of poetic imagery, but the language of concrete reality. A parallel description of this creative work is found in Colossians 3, 9 through 11. Do not lie to one another, since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices, and have put on the new self, who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. A renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, Barbarian, Scythian, slave and free man, but Christ is all and in all. We find again in this passage that the new self has been created in God's image. Therefore, as those who have put on the new man, Christians are holy and beloved in the sight of God. In answer to the question, Who am I? Every Christian should respond, I am a new creature, created in righteousness and holiness, holy and beloved in the sight of God. Nothing else matters. 
For neither is circumcision anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. Galatians chapter 6, verse 15. From all that has been said in the paragraphs above, it is not surprising that Paul considers the new creation to be of utmost importance. Nothing matters except this creative work of God. Neither circumcision, nor baptism, nor any other external human action or religious rite is anything if new creation is absent. On the other hand, if God has made us new creatures, the absence of circumcision, uncircumcision, or baptism, or any other religious rite is not anything either. The only thing that matters for any of us is this. Am I a new creature? Or am I still the same person that I have always been? If I'm the same person that I've always been, then I'm not a Christian. And no amount of church attendance, liturgy, religious ceremony, going forward at the invitation, or accepting Jesus means anything. What is regeneration? It is a new creation. In short, it's a miracle, not a decision, or any kind of human act whatsoever.